Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and we're joined today by Christopher Jones. Welcome. Thanks, Jenny. Christopher Jones is an assistant professor of history at BYU, and he teaches courses on early America, religion in American history, slavery and the slave trade, and family history. He's the co-editor of Missionary Interests, Protestant and Mormon Missions in the 19th and 20th Centuries. Uh, that came out just this year from Cornell University Press. And he is also currently serving as um, editor of the Journal of Mormon History. So we're delighted to be joined by you today. Thank you. We're looking at Alma 36, and the artwork is by Ben Crowder. It's called Harrowed Up No More. And this is a digital illustration he did last year in 2023. So first of all, Dr. Jones, I want to ask you, what does this phrase mean, Harrowed Up No More? Um, What's happening here with Alma? Yeah, great question. So this uh, takes place in Alma 36, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and this is sort of the longest and fullest exposition of Alma's conversion experience mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, we have earlier recitations, a secondhand one in the Book of Messiah, and then an earlier briefer one earlier in Alma. Uh, but this is a testimony that he's giving to his sons near the end of his life, uh, and he's recounting in great detail um, both his pre-conversion actions, uh, going about with the sons of uh, Messiah trying to destroy mm -hmm. the church, mm -hmm. uh, his visit uh, by an angel, mm -hmm. um, uh, the three days and three nights that he spends uh, in a right. sort of state of, I don't want to say death, uh, but yeah. certainly sort of out of it, right? He's fainted, stupor. he's passed yeah. out, yeah, <laughs> stupor, um, and then his ultimately uh, coming to, yeah. right, and experiencing this uh, forgiveness for his sins. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, can you can we look at the scriptures a little yeah, bit? So absolutely. That, let's, let's maybe start in verse seventeen. In, yeah, in absolutely. Alpha thirty six. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a Son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. Thank you. All right, so thinking about those scriptures, and then let's look at this art piece. How, yeah. how is that being visualized here by Ben Crowder? Yeah, this is great. So um, I am not an artist. I'm not an expert in art in any way. Okay. Uh, but I felt like that kind of freed me a little bit to just think about how this uh, particular visualization, this particular image yeah. spoke to me. Perfect. Uh, and so what I saw in it when I first encountered it was uh, these six squares here in red. Uh, representing the three days and three nights that yeah. Alma spends in the gall of bitterness yeah. where he's harrowed up by his sins. Um, and then the forgiveness that comes uh, when he receives the words of Jesus uh, and he could remember his sins no more and he was harrowed up by them no yeah. more. And that's re represented by the, the white rectangle there, yeah. this wholeness that comes yeah. um, after those three days of um, remembering his past sins, uh, sort of wrestling with them and then ultimately crying out for forgiveness. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a really great reading of the symbolism here. Like you said, I think it reads left to right. And yeah. then um, I also noticed the the texture that he's yeah, added absolutely. to these red squares, kind of rough and like they're cracking. Yeah, they still this is kind the of messiness fragile. of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Messy, yeah. Uh -huh. and, then, and then of course in the white rectangle, we have none of that. This right. is just pure, this is just clean, this is sort yeah. of simple and straightforward. There's no texture uh -huh. attached to that one. And I think that represents that feeling after having repented and after having received forgiveness where yeah. your, your sins have been forgiven, the Lord promises that he will remember them no more and we have a clean slate right. to work with. Yeah, and then in the background we have this sort of darkness as yeah. maybe he's wrestling through all of this for these three days. And mm -hmm. then I love that contrast of this glorious white shining beacon of, of Christ coming through the darkness. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, it, so it is very abstract, um, and that's a little different than what we often see in pictures of this scene in Alma 36. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that speaks to you, or do you prefer more of a figurative kind of piece, or how do you feel like they compare? 
Um, I love this. I, we mm -hmm. could have talked about any number of pieces, I think, yeah. in the Elias tradition that focus on Alma 36 and Alma's conversion and mm -hmm. the story of he and the sons of Messiah being these great missionaries. Um, but I love that, that you reached out and contacted me about this one um, because it's so different. Um, right. I wasn't familiar with, uh, with Ben Crowder's work prior yeah. to this, mm -hmm. and so I spent some time on this website looking around oh, at the yeah. different ones, and I really, really like them. Yeah. And I like them because of their abstractness, mm -hmm. not for the abstractness sake, but because of uh, the different meanings that we can find in them. You picked up on the texture in a way that I didn't initially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I picked up on the three days and three yeah. nights, and right? I, I didn't notice that. And yeah. so mm -hmm. each of us can read this mm -hmm. in in different ways, right, right, as we engage with the text, as we engage with the scriptures, yeah. right? Um, if I didn't know that this dealt specifically with these passages from Alma mm -hmm. 36, this same sort of abstract representation, I think, could be applied to a number of other scriptural passages or events in the LDS tradition, in the Latter-day Saint historical tradition, okay. in which similar, uh, similar instances of people um, going through these conversion experiences, hmm. uh, experiencing something very similar to what Alma describes here. We could look back a few chapters earlier and uh, think about King Lamoni, right? Yeah, uh, right. Where he goes through yeah. a similar, not the same, but a uh -huh. similar experience, right? Um, but we could also look in the Latter-day Saint tradition. I thought about Joseph Smith's first vision and his right. Uh, right. going into yeah. the woods, mm -hmm. uh, kneeling down and praying and immediately being uh, confronted by some dark or demonic force, right? right. And then him calling out, um, at this moment of great alarm and experiencing this vision mm -hmm. of God the Father and Jesus Christ appearing to him, mm -hmm. forgiving him of his sins, mm -hmm. and, as in the case here, mm -hmm. uh, starting over with that clean slate moving forward. Right. Yeah, I'm thinking about Lehi, too, and Absolutely. how he went through that dark and dreary waste before he gets to the tree with the delicious That's great. I love fruit. That. And, and Paul, right, yeah, in the New absolutely. Testament and yep. his conversion experience. So, yeah, and, and Joseph Smith, sorry. No, no. Joseph no. Smith comes out of this uh, early 19th century revivalist evangelical background, right? He, he frames his experience this way, where he attends these different religious revivals hosted by a Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian mm -hmm. preachers, uh, where he describes people experiencing actually this exact thing, people oh being called up to the mourner's bench uh, by these evangelical preachers and invited to uh, repent of their sins when they've been convicted in their heart, uh, and then crying out to Jesus and receiving forgiveness. Mm -hmm. and, and Joseph Smith, one of his accounts says, I wanted to feel and shout like the rest, but I yeah. could feel nothing, oh. right? And so he then retires into this grove of trees where he experiences it. Um, but his, his uh, conversion experience that ultimately uh, results in the first vision and, and the important message that the Lord communicates to him there was one that was uh, somewhat common, uh, mm -hmm. certainly not unique uh, mm -hmm. at this time in the early 19th century. And I thought a lot about this week, uh, as I thought about this image, how early readers of the Book of Mormon might have read these passages mm -hmm. in Alma. And I think it's something that would have resonated with a lot of them, those coming yeah. from these uh, revivalist backgrounds, right. these Methodist or Baptist backgrounds, and many of whom, uh, many of these early Latter-day Saints that experienced Hmm. Um, similar experience, similar things like this yeah. um, at those revivals that they attended and the way that this would have spoke to them, confirming their experience and then confirming sort of a fullness of the truth that they encounter right. here in, in the church or in the Book of Mormon. This is fascinating. I like that it's both a, a sort of a type scene in the scriptures, but yeah. also something that would have been culturally really relatable yeah, for I Joseph so. Smith's contemporaries. Absolutely. Yeah. And even for us today. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and I like that Ben Crowder has universalized this moment very to much sort so. of encapture that broader experience. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, your personal reaction to this artwork or something? Yeah, and, and I, I want to be careful before I proceed any further, uh, especially if Ben Crowder's watching. But um, <laughs> I, I don't mean this as a critique at all. Okay. Um, but one of the great things about this chapter um, and these verses in particular is that they serve as the culmination of this chiasmus, of this oh, uh, uh, right. chiastic structure here in this passage. And these are the culminating. This is the, mm -hmm. I was hard up by my sins, I cried out to Jesus, Jesus forgives me, I was hard up by my sins no mm -hmm. more, right? Um, and in this portrayal, that again, just takes this as a, we miss everything that comes after this. And that's not necessarily oh, a problem, okay. but I, I almost want to see, okay, how do we deal with the rest? How do we visualize uh -huh. the rest of Alma 36 yeah. here, right? Yeah. Um, because we have that clean slate to work with, but that doesn't mean the post-conversion life is any less textured, any less complicated, any less right. messy, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe this is a process, hopefully not the three days and three nights, right? 
But this is a process that we have to continually go through throughout our lives of repentance, receiving forgiveness right. uh, through the grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I love that. Well, and the great thing about Ben Crowder is he's doing a lot of he really is. great it's, art. It's and so, awesome. so I'm yeah. sure he's got some images of that, too, somewhere on his website. Wonderful. <laughs> go check Wonderful. It out. I will. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. I appreciate it.